Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to the live Shabbat class. This is your host, Jeremiah Israel, and welcome to another Sabbath day. Before I get started, for those who are new or return visitors, please hit the like and subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing. It only helps to get uh, my uh, get my lesson across YouTube algorithm and also it helps helps you to be notified when I upload new lessons this is a little, ch little chapel on the hill put on the chair and welcome uh, this ministry is according to Jeremiah 29 and 5 and Zephaniah 2 and 1 Zephaniah 2 and 1 says Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. This does not include all of the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel that is not desired are the ones that are keeping the commandments, the laws, the statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah. You're not desired when you're teaching, telling people the law, things that you that you know you're not, you can't do. No, I can't. I can't eat that. No, I, we're not going out to no part on the Sabbath, violating Most High God's Sabbath day. I don't do birthdays, and you know, you, you know, you you run into a, a few Hebrews that think birthdays are are, are, are are good to do. I just 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 I just I don't even try to argue with them because the fact is they are they are uh, prone to do evil, and you know they got other wicked things that they justify. I, I I just you know I'm like, all right, well you can, y'all can do the shout outs to your birthdays and all that stuff, when everybody know that it's wicked. But you wanna you wanna pull up that birthday sign, and you, even in even in the satanic bible, it says birthdays are one of the most hot uh, holy satanic days that everybody practices. Worshiping of your own birth of, of your own self. No, but anyway, pull up a chair, have a seat. Maybe you learn something new because I'm teaching according to the King James 1611 Bible. I don't I don't go into many other Bible you know many other books because. Those books don't have the contracts that the Most High God gave to the Israelites. I'm gonna stick to the stick to the law that pertains to me. Now, those other books doesn't pertain to anybody. Why would I want to teach my kids or anybody else's kids from that book when it doesn't pertain to? It it may or may not pertain to them. Anyway, if you guys want to support my ministry. You can go to Amazon.com. I'm not asking you for a cash app or anything. Don't send any money to me. You can purchase a book. Biblical Events, my last book that I, I wrote. I have a total of 17 or 18 books now. Biblical Events uh, by Jeremiah Israel. That's me. If you want to get this book available at the library, maybe you don't have the, the, the coin to spend. You know, you don't have 17, 18 bucks. This 20 bucks probably get it delivered to your house. You purchase the book, this paperback. This is a this is the paperback version. You you purchase this book, 20 bucks get it to your house. Now, many of y'all would go out and pay $200 for a pair of Jordans without even sneezing. Because it's for pride's sake. But what 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 penny have you put up in the kingdom for your own but you know for your for your soul's sake so where, where, where you spend your money is, is is basically where you are in in life you say you believe in God don't you biblical events it'll teach you something about the God you say you worship in you know, and, I, and, I, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of y'all is not going to believe the truth, but the fact is, 
And you should know the truth And the truth shall make you free If you believe in it Genesis is the beginning now, if you want to make these books available at the library, you would know you need to know the, the name of the author. You go to the library webpage. You have the name of the author. You just if if you want to get all this information, you first you go to Amazon.com on that search line. You put Jeremiah Israel in the search line and hit enter, and all the books that I've written under Jeremiah Israel will come up, and this will be one of them. Say for instance. Genesis the beginning. You click on Genesis the, the beginning link, written by Jeremiah Israel. And if you want to make this book available at the library, you need to know the name of the book, the name of the author, and this ISBN number right here. You take the information, go to the library website, and request that this book be available at, at the library. Now that ain't gonna cost you no money. But if you just want to purchase the book, hey, just go to lab, go to uh, Amazon.com, put Jeremiah Israel in the uh, search line, hit enter, and when the link comes up, you clicked on the link, and then you can say, you know, buy now and purchase the book. Have it have it delivered to your house. Matter of fact, you want you want to make it available for for the church, for for your church or for your study group. Biblical events would be a great study group, uh, a book, because it, 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 it goes across many of the topics in the Bible that, uh, you know, the flood, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, the Samson and Delilah, all of the, the great women of the Bible that had an impact in the Bible, like Tamar. Miriam, De Deborah the prophetess, Ruth, Esther, Judah, had, had, had uh, Daniel in the lion's den, the prophets of Daniel. So if you want to make this a, 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 a study book, feel free to stud purchase enough for your group. You can purchase them in ebook format, paperback, or hard copy. Anyway, let's get with our lesson. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas, Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the Sub Saharan and the transatlantic slave trade. My topic today is following after Christ have requirements. Most Israelites will say that they love God. But which God? There's a lot of gods because, you know, when you go to the Christian churches, they don't never say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They just say God. So you don't know what God are they referring. It can't be the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob because they don't, they don't even prescribe to his laws. Y'all need to open your mind and start and start thinking about these questions and asking these questions. If you love your God, your father, the God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, when people start talking, you got questions. Which God you love? You have not mentioned the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. If you love him, then why you don't prescribe to his laws and his commandments? Most Israelites will say that they love God, but which God? Many camps will claim that they are followers of Christ, but only in speech. Their actions begs to differ. Let me show you the faith that true followers of Christ had. Matthew 2 and 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. Some wise men from the east came looking for Christ. What made them wise? Psalms 111 and 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. These men were Israelites who feared the judgments of the Most High and kept his laws and commandments. 
These wise men came to Jerusalem because they had faith that the son of Yah was born. They made the journey because they had faith. They, they just got up, you know, they saw that star and they just walked toward the star. Wise men gathered up and just walked toward the star. Star, yeah. He got to be born because this star been standing here for the last few days. Matthew 2 and 2 saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. They were looking for Christ because they were led by the star in the east and they came to worship. Nobody told them that Christ was born. They followed the star. Do you think any camp leaders would see the star and prepare to travel to the star and worship Christ? Or would they simply gather and parade up and down the streets? Or would they attempt to find and kill him? I'm not certain what they would do. Why? Most of them are doing less than Pharisees and Sadducees. That's just my thought. I don't think most of them would, 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 would pick up and say, you know what? Let's follow after that star. There's been a prophecy written in the book. They claim to know the Bible, but... Prophecy written in the book that Christ would be born. This is might be an omen right here. Let's go. Let's follow the star. Let's go and, and seek after that star. Now, listen. Let's tell you what our enemy did, though. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a contrasting depiction of what our people do now. And what our enemies do now. Matthew 2 and 3. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him. Oh, oh Master, we tired. Master, we sick. Yeah, all the Jeru all the Jews in Jerusalem, when when, when the Pharaoh got worried, all the, all the Negroes in Jerusalem got worried too. Master, we worried. Herod heard about this the same way. Edomites hear about what goes on in Israelite community today. Jews were running and telling everything that happened in their communities, like royal, like loyal dogs. Yeah, the Pharaoh wasn't walking around. You know, white folks don't walk around among us in our hoods and uh, uh, among the people. Only way they find out things because some of you Negroes running up and running around with your mouth all hanging wide open, talking and. and and, and just telling everything that, that you shouldn't tell. The, 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 the thing should be saying, if you want to keep a secret, don't tell the Negro. Because Negroes don't know how to keep secrets. They have, they have, that is why so many of these Negroes are dead today. Because when black folks join these Illuminati groups, and these people are, are serious about keeping secrets, they don't know how to keep them. And they wind up dead because they, they open in their damn mouth. If you're going to join the damn group, shut your damn mouth. But a lot of, a lot of them, they, they join the group. Yeah, I'm going to join. And then next thing you know that, they're telling everything that they they, they they seen and heard. Why was all Jerusalem troubled with Herod? With Herod, Malcolm X has a speech that said, "When the slave masters got sick, the house Negro said, boss, we sick.' This is the same thought. All of Jerusalem is worried because Herod was worried. Also, why do Israelites think that fighting against Yah by going against His commandments is a good thing to do? If so," Without making it a singular issue, why are the Israelites not successful as a nation? Matthew 2 and 4. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them which, where Christ should be born. 
Now, he didn't go to Rome. Herod didn't go to Rome and say, in Acts, the, the, the Romans, his people, hey, where would Christ be born? He went to the scribes, the, the people that, that wrote the Hebrew language, the, the people of the book. And his, and his people that studied with the scribes and the, and the Levites, his, the chief priest. Herod did not ask Romans who did not have knowledge of the Jews and their records. The chief priests were mainly Edomites. This position was appointed by the Romans in order to govern the Jews and tax them. However, Herod asked them where would Christ be born? How do our enemies today discover what is going on in the Israelite communities? Our enemies have always found out what was going on in Israelite communities through our leaders. Matthew 2 and 5. And they said unto him, in Bethlehem of Judah, for thus it is written by the prophets. The scribe and chief priests responded to Herod and told him that Christ would be born in Jerusalem. Where did they get this information? Do you think our enemies cannot find out when they spread out their net to look for you? Because most Israelites do not realize that the plantation has simply been reconfigured because the former slave masters have appointed overseers within the Israelite community to keep them informed. That's, that's what all these organizations are. They are. They're overseers. Micah 5 and 2. But thou, Bethlehem, Epithah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall, be, shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, who's going forth have been from of old, from everlasting. He telling you Christ been from everlasting. He gonna be born a, a, among you, but he, he's been from everlasting. Even the scribes and Pharisees knew the prophecy of where Christ would be born. They knew the truth, but they rejected it because just as Israelites do today, when the scribes researched where Christ would be born, their actions proved that Christ was rejected because they knew he would be born. Now, what what other, you know, that, that was a miracle because a star doesn't stay in place for all of those days. A, a, a star stayed in place for days, for days, maybe for weeks. The wise men saw they came. This star stayed around for a long time. No star ever does that. that is, that's a miracle in itself. That is a miracle in itself. You don't, you, you know, a star don't stick around like that for days. You just stuck around. So, that he give you a, a, a open hand right there to understand that the leaders in Jerusalem knew the prophecy, went to the prophecy in the Bible, and rejected Christ when they did that. Because they told the Pharisee about the prophecy, and they didn't want nothing to do with it. You know... Like I'm saying, the fact is, the Most High God give you, should give you in your in your in your spirit, the ability to understand even your people how they were acting. Now, reading this, when the Pharisee went to him, and he th they told him, they should be out there with the wise men running to look for him and worship him. No, but they told the enemy. Matthew eleven sixteen, 16. But where unto shall liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows. This is a characteristic of the real Jews today. They are like children on the corner performing. 
doing the latest dance or some other type of foolishness. They're calling their friends. Let me take it a step further. It is similar to these camps marching up and down city streets when the Bible does not command it. The Most High God commands the Israelites to build communities and live in them, grow our own foods, marry from among the people in the community. The leaders today prefer to be seen and heard because they ignore the required work that Yah commands them to do. Now they say they say they're doing work, but the fact the work that they're claiming to be doing is no this is it's nowhere to be seen in the Bible. And all this, the work that the Most High God told us to do, they ain't doing none of that. They're not even they're not even teaching that that, that hand right there. So I'm trying to understand. You know, at one time I I I I, I, I love these camps. I still love the brothers, but the fact is they ain't doing the work. They, they, they're going off. The only thing they're doing is being seen of men. Matthew 11 and 17. And saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. Hey man, do that dance that you did yesterday. Do a freestyle rap for me. Christ already saw the Jews forsaking the Most High God and wanting to become performers. Christ did not organize marches and sit-ins. That was not the work that his father instructed him to do. The work that Christ was doing during that time was a required work that needed to be done because our people were in turmoil, healed the sick, cast out devils, freely give, don't be taking money from people. When he sent his disciples out, he didn't tell his disciples to take a penny from nobody to pay for your travels and all this other stuff. If you want to pay for your travels, you pay for it yourself. You're not doing one thing that the Most High God told you to do. Doing everything just like the Gentiles. You traveling around just like the, the uh, Catholic Church traveling around. Doing nothing for nobody. Every, every day I see acres of land for sale on Facebook and Instagram. I also see videos of certain Israelite camps marching up and down city streets, but not one camp has purchased enough land to build communities and grow their own food. Where are their priorities? Because I see land for sale every day. You know, all the time in Texas, they selling acres of land everywhere. All the marching up and down the streets and all that stuff, Y'all can stop all that until you get get communities built. Then you can change change this. You know what? You just on Sabbath day you 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 go in a big bus. And for people who are, are wanting to change their life. They, you know, you know, they meet certain criteria, you bring them to the school and teach them. Matthew 11, 18, for John came neither eating nor drinking. They say he had a devil. If the, if the fact is, the, the case in point is, it doesn't matter how the prophet come. Those who are going to reject him are going to find an excuse. He can come like Moses. Easy to get along with. Not going to cause no trouble. If you want to take something from him, he'll give it to you. 
like Miriam and, and Miriam and his own sister and brother were trying. You know, you know, we got other prophets other than Moses. Moses was going to let him have it. Most I got and stepped into it in in in, in this place. Moses would have been like, "Yeah, it's cool. If y'all want, if y'all don't want me to lead y'all, all right, cool. I'm gone." Concerning the holy, the Jews did not have anything positive to say about the righteous. John the Baptist neither ate or nor drank, and they said he had a devil on him. These were our people, Jews, who did not want to follow the law. Nothing has changed. You know, because the fact is, this is, this is what I get tired of. I get tired of all these camps thinking that this Bible was referring to the so-called Christian church and Christianity was not even around back then. No, it was Jews just like them. Scribes and Pharisees. Isaiah 39. That this is a rebellious people. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Our people, the Israelites, from the top of the from the top to the bottom are rebellious. Many Israelite leaders are puffed up with pride where they cannot have a civil conversation with each other from camp to camp. They puffed up with pride. You 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 so beneath them. First Corinthians four and six. And these things, brethren, I have it in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sakes, that ye might learn in us not to think of man above that which is written, that no one of you be puffed up for one against another. <clears throat> Our forefather, Apostle Paul, warned that the Israelites not to think of man above 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 that which is written if Israelite leaders are, are not doing that which is written should you continue to follow them see because they they are they are doing they are doing their own thing the answer is no you are placing them above that which is written Isaiah 30 and 10, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. We don't want to, don't, don't talk to us about the law. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. No, just tell us everything going to be okay. Those are the churches that our people are filled, that fill the churches with. They don't, they're not filling the church houses just telling them they're wrong. Just telling them their wickedness. They're not going to fill that church house. But if you were to tell them everything going to be okay and God is a God of love and nothing going to happen to you, just, you know, just love God and, and all this stuff and be wicked as hell. Our people are so rebellious. They follow after feminism, LGBTQ. Democratic, Republic, Republican, Pan-Africanism, Egyptology, etc. And all of these religions are against the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Matthew 11 and 19. The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Christ came eating and drinking in moderation and they talked about him too. Israelite leaders have created many types of divisions to keep their people separated and there is not one law that supports their actions. The Most High God never told the Israelites to say his name in place of the commandments. He told the Israelites not to say his name. Exodus 27 Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord would not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Vain means to, to do something for nothing. 
Don't take his name. Don't say his name for nothing. Vain is when you do something for nothing. The scriptures also warn the Israelites about naming the Most High God. Ecclesiastes 23 and 9. Accustom not thy mouth to swearing, neither use thyself for the, to the naming of the Holy One. The scriptures command the Israelites not to name the Most High Yah in Christ. Tells us what his name, that his name is too holy. Matthew 6 and 9. After this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means holy or con consecrated. The Most High Yah's name is too holy to be seen in your daily speech. The Israelites are commanded not to be naming the Holy One, which includes Christ. Do we listen? No, we don't listen. Because you know what? Every day I, I, I go on my, my Facebook page or something, and I see uh, there was no letter J and all this other stuff. You know, Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahweh Shah. You know, I speak English. Yes, they changed uh, because, you know, Jesus is... Uh, at first, in Latin, it's I-E-S-U-S. -S. It was not Zeus. Because on the cross, when when Christ was, uh, when he was uh, uh, crucified, they wrote his name in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin. So they wrote it in I-E-S-U-S -S on the cross, too. In Hebrew, it was similar to I E O S U S or something like that. It was the same written in, in Hebrew, in, in Greek, I meant. So the fact is, Greek and, and Latin, his name was trans, translated in Greek and Latin. So people, we were already speaking those languages back then. We were already captured. This is just one instance, but there are many more that I can name. So when you are trying to be righteous in Israel, or you want to do the right thing, or you want to walk according to, to the Most High God, you got to keep in consideration the scriptures, what the Most High God tells you to do. Because if you just pick up a few precepts and that's it, you're going to be tossed around like all of these other people are. That's in these camps. Oh, the leather J. They got you wigging out on stuff like that. The most like God ain't having us wigging out on that. He got us tell you know the law. He places his name, he places laws above all his names. He ain't telling you to worry about his name. Just like you're a child in your father's house. You don't spend your time saying your father's name. You spend your time doing what your father requires you to do. He goes to tell you that a lot of y'all that, that, that's leading these camps and leading these people, you grew up without a father. And then you don't understand how a father is, what a father does, what a father, how the father act. You don't, your, your, your children don't supposed to be saying your name. If you are a son of the Most High Yah, and you call yourself a son of the Most High Yah, he ain't, you, you, don't, you shouldn't be worried about saying his name. That, what kind of idiot, that, that is so idiotic. You gonna be worried about saying your father's name? No, you worry about doing what your father tell you to do. But you don't hear me though, because a lot of y'all, y'all still be stuck on stupid the, the next day. So I tell you what, this is where we're gonna stop off. We're gonna stop here. Uh, shepherds in Israel. We'll try to finish up on this. I'm just, I'm just telling you. So the fact is, if you, if you guys are, are, talk, are thinking about doing the will of the Most High, Most High Yah, it is, it is more than just going to church on Sunday because that's not even that, that, that's what you're gonna have to destroy if you are so-called Christian that you going to church on Sunday when the Most High God say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy? You got to go as he instructed you to go. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. 
Sabbath means seven. And in Spanish, Saturday is Sabado, which is the seventh day. Seventh day. So remember the Sabbath, the seventh day to keep it holy. You start there. You, you start and you rebuild yourself. And you don't stop. You don't join a camp to, to, uh, to be guided off by them. You learn the law. Yeah, they, they probably could teach you some of the law, get you grinded in how, how uh, you, you, uh, you know, it's, it's like learning anything new. You learn, uh, learn the, uh, how, they, how they go after the precepts. And then once you learn that, you, you let the Holy Ghost sit with you. Most like God said, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. He didn't say some camp member going to teach you everything. The Holy Ghost will teach you. Yeah, you got to start somewhere. But once you get your start, you let the Holy Ghost speak to you. You open this book up and, 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 and seek knowledge. That's what you do. You let the Holy Ghost teach you all things. As Christ taught. Because the fact is, you going off, you going off with these people like, like them. They, they, they're gonna have you sitting, teaching the same thing, saying the same thing. And I can't see them having, you know, you differing from them. So, no, let the Holy Ghost speak to you. You, 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 you sitting there, bother with, with camps all day and all night and. Studying with your brother. Yeah, you spend some time to study with your brother, but not every day. You 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 take some time off to yourself and, and, and ask the Lord to give you some understanding in, in these in these words, in these scriptures. Teach me, Lord. Help me to go the right direction where I need to go. And to help me to be a use to my brothers and sisters. And my family. Help, help us to build this ministry. To gather ourselves together, the nation that is not desired in. Help us to be in a wide open place where we can practice your righteous acts and grow our own foods and build our own community and have ample water and ample resources. A small heaven upon the earth. And all and all things help us, O oh Lord, and Give us, give us your protection. Be an enemy to the, to our enemies and an adversary to our adversaries, as you so command, so promise. You said in your word that you'll do it. But we got to come to you right, as you as you commanded us to come to you. But I'm gonna leave it here. If you guys want to want to. Uh, Support my ministry. Biblical events is my last book. Here my Israel. If you want to make this available, the name of the book and the author's name and his ISBN number, we'll get it in the library. If you just have that information there, I have a number of books. So if you want to, you can go to Amazon.com and my. My given name, I was writing in my given name first. I think I wrote about seven, eight books in my given name. Put this name here, Stephen Ederson Sr. And you can purchase books like Hebrew Lessons. Not the, the language, Hebrew Lessons of the people. Teach the, the doctrine. You can uh, pick up those books in books such as Hebrew Doctrine of Christ. Stephen Ederson, without the senior. But you go on Amazon.com, these books will be available. If you have a uh, if you have a Kindle account, unlimited Kindle Unlimited account, you can get all of those books and read them at your at your leisure. So, uh, whatever way you decide you want to support me, I'm not asking you to do some monumental uh, uh, purchases where you 
you you break the bank. No, these books, this paperback book, probably no more than six, 17 bucks, 16, $16.99 or, six, or seventeen dollars. And you probably can get it shipped to your house for you know twenty twenty some dollars a, a cheaper. I'm not asking you to pay a whole lot of money for for a book that's going to help you out. That's going to give you a, a start on, on obtaining the understanding and knowledge of these precepts. Because the Holy Spirit is in this book with, you know, it was written through the Holy Spirit. You know, God, God said and guided me through all of these scriptures. So the fact is, if it's if it's in me writing this book, you should receive the same gift when you read it, a similar gift. If you read it with your spirit in, it and you want to be, you want to be saved, and you are sanctifying yourself and doing the things that the Most High God requires you to do, you will find you will come away with the same type of uh, spiritual strength. Anyway, with that family and friends. I like to say, Shalom. Shalom.